In the last video, we had worked a little bit with the unit step function. Um, in this video, we want to consider what would be its Laplace transform. So we want to consider how to find this. And to do that, of course, we use the definition, it would be the integral. Here's our function. times e to the minus st dt. And t goes from 0 to infinity. And we realize this is always 0 until t reaches c. And then when, it's, when it does that, and when it's greater than c, then that becomes equal to 1. So this would equal the integral from c to infinity of e to the minus st dt. Now it should be pretty straightforward because this will equal e to the minus st divided by minus s, and t goes from c to infinity. So this will equal e, put in t for the value of infinity here, that will just be e to the minus infinity, divided by minus s, and subtract e to the minus s, and now t, that has a value of c. And of course, this is 1 over e to the infinity, so that is 0. And here we have a two negative signs here. So of course, that is just e to the minus sc divided by s. So the Laplace transform of the step function, it exists, and it was pretty easy to determine. It is equal to that quantity. And again, we could, get, we could determine that pretty quickly just by using the definition of the Laplace transform. So that's it, e to the minus cs divided by s. So that was pretty straightforward. Now, as we noticed in the last video, the most interesting application of the unit step function is when other functions are multiplied by it. So let's consider the most general case where we have the step function. I see the most general case, multiplying it by not some function f of t, but f of t minus c. What would be the Laplace transform of that expression? So once again, we just use the definition of a Laplace transform. It will be the integral u of t minus c. This right here now is the quantity that we want to determine the Laplace transform of. So of course that is multiplied by e to the minus st dt. And t goes from 0 to infinity. And again, we realize this is going to be 0 whenever t is less than c. After that, it is equal to 1. So we can take this out and have an integral where c does not go from, or t does not go from 0 to infinity. t goes from 
c to infinity. Like that. Now, how do we take this Laplace transform, though? We have f of t minus c e to the minus s t. Of course, we can't say that that would be f of t times f of minus c. That's nonsensical. That certainly isn't going to work. So what we do is try a variable change. Let's write this over here. So we have f t minus c times e to the minus st dt. Now, for this, we want to have, let's say, let's call t minus c. Let v equal t minus c. Now dv, that will just be dt. Now if we're going to have an integral though where v is the variable, then we have, you know, what are going to be the limits of it. So let's see how that works out. t goes from c to infinity. When t equals c, v is 0. When t equals infinity, v will also be infinity. So let's rewrite our integral now with our variable change. So this will equal the integral f of t minus c, that's v, times e to the minus s times t. Now t will equal v plus c. And dt, that's the same as dv. And v goes from 0 to infinity. So that's our new integral. And this, we can write like this, e to the minus s v times e to the minus s c. And in fact, that might be more useful for us. So let's take this out and write this in its place. So we have e to the minus s v times e to the minus s c dv. So there is our integral. Now v is the variable, c is a constant, and we're not taking anything here with respect to s, so we can treat this as if it's just a constant, meaning that this can go to the outside of the integral. So let's put it there. We have e to the minus sc, and take it away from here. dv. And we look and we see, well, this is a Laplace transform. Now, it doesn't matter uh, what the variable of integration is when you have a, a definite integral. For example, if we have the integral from 0 to 3 of 
dt squared dt, well, that's going to have the same thing if we have the definite integral 0 to 3 of v squared dv. We're going to get the same answer, obviously, either way. So it doesn't matter what the variable is inside of here. So what we have then is that e to the minus sc times this integral That's the same thing as e to the minus sc times this integral, f of t, e to the minus st dt. So this is a Laplace transform of whatever function we want to write it as, f of v or f of t, and just make the appropriate variable changes. So we go back then to where we started from. The Laplace transform of this, let's write it down here, equals e to the minus sc times the Laplace transform of f of t. And here then is our answer. So the Laplace transform multiplying this step function times another function is the Laplace transform of just not f of t minus c, but just the Laplace transform of f of t times e to the minus s multiplied by whatever c is equal to. And that's our answer. Um, in the next video, we will use this formula then, and we will try to work out specific examples. And I see that, I think that you'll see that when we work some examples with this, it actually is very straightforward to use. And then we will actually see that it's a very convenient formula to use. But we will save that for uh, the next video. Um, a reminder that the playlist for these videos, all the playlist, is at the website digital-university.org.